Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson, and welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. In the last tutorial, we looked at the line cut tool. This time we're going to take a look at the loop slash path cut tool. I already have a sphere in the scene, and I've made it editable. So to select the loop cut tool, I'll press K and L. And you can see that shows us a heads up display. The default mode is loop. So if I move over my object, you can see I can create a loop cut when I move my cursor over an edge. And this tool does work in polygon, edge, and point mode. I'll just come back to polygon mode. So if I click and create a cut, there's a couple of things that happen. You'll notice this green line that appears on the edge that I've cut, and there's a point at the bottom edge. That green dot or point indicates the left-hand side of the HUD slider. And that cut's still live, so I can grab this little blue triangle and I can reposition where the cut is on my object. Take a look over here in the attributes, and you can see these are also changing as I drag that blue triangle. So I could change them over there as well. I can also just drag that straight off as well to remove that cut. If I want to center that cut, I click on these three strokes here. And that changes the offset to 50%. I'm just going to drag that again. Click and bring that back to 50%. So that's 50% of the distance between this edge here and this edge here. If I click the plus sign, I can add cuts. And I can drag the offset here to offset the selected cut. Once again, click on the three lines to bring that back to an even distance. Click again, click again, and so on. And I can also change the number of cuts down here as well. Now that I've got that set up with five cuts, there is an option to reuse the cuts over here under interaction. So if I click that, when I go to make a new cut, it'll create five cuts, exactly the same as the previous cuts, which is really handy. Just like that. These options down here, restrict to selection, select cuts, and connect cut edges, are exactly the same as the line cut tool. Now the other mode is path. And if you select path and go to make a cut on edges that haven't been selected, then it just acts like the loop mode. So I might just undo, get rid of some of those cuts. And let's just use this selection. Once again, KL. So path mode is selected. And you can see if I click, it only cuts across those selected edges, which is pretty useful as well. I have to say, I don't really use the path mode very often because most of the time I forget about it. But that is a really good way of being able to control where the loop actually cuts. Let's come back to loop. Now the offset mode is set to proportional by default. I want to stop this from giving me six edges, so I'm just going to not reuse my cut. And I'm just going to make sure bidirectional cut is selected. We'll look at that in a moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just move a few of these points. I actually go into point mode, grab my slide tool just by pressing MO, and just slide these around. It's going to make my sphere look a little strange. KL again. Now I'm in proportional mode by default, so if I click, the cut's going to be made at a distance relative to the neighboring edge. So I click like that. But if I want to be very specific, for the offset mode, I would choose edge distance. And that way you can see it takes a little bit of zeroing in, but if I just move it a little closer here, you can see I can get a nice straight cut. So whether you use proportional or edge distance really depends on the kind of cut you need to make. Okay, so we turned bidirectional back on. Now, bidirectional will make a cut both sides of the edge that you're clicking on. If this is an actual loop of polygons, then this will make no difference. But you can see if I click on this loop here, it's making a cut above and below the edge that I'm clicking on. If I turn that off, you can see I can choose to make the cut 
above or below, depending on where I have my cursor positioned. Most of the time, I just leave bidirectional turned on and I find myself just dissolving the edges I don't need. But that's pretty much because I forget about bidirectional cut, but it can definitely have its uses. There's also a symmetrical cut option that I often forget about. This could be really easy when you're working with something like a cube, for example. Just turn off my sphere for a moment. Just make this editable. And without symmetrical cut turned on, I can also, of course, just adjust the position of that. And once again, add to that and change the position. But with symmetry or symmetrical cut turned on, I can click and precisely position both cuts. So that's really handy. So if I wanted to add control cuts to that cube, for example, and drop that into a subdivision surface, then that's super easy to do. I'm just going to deselect symmetrical cut. Now toggle direction is grayed out. That's because in my options, I have to choose as the offset mode edge distance, and you can see that toggle direction is checkable. So if I check that and just make a cut, you can see as I move my cursor down, my edge moves up. And as I move my cursor up, my edge moves down. Whereas the default behavior is to add a cut right on the cursor. So I'm just going to turn that on again. And if I click, notice how the green dot is at the very top undo that and if I uncheck toggle direction and click notice how the default is to have the green dot at the bottom not something that I use but that's how it works so I'm just going to bring mine back to proportional and stop cut at ngon and stop cut at pole are both checked by default I never uncheck these but if for some reason you wanted to have your loop cut directly through things like ngons and poles you could uncheck these now, down the bottom here, we have quantize subdivision. Now, quantize subdivision will divide the edge up into steps, and you can see there's a quantize step option here. If I just check that on, I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. You can see when I move my cursor over the edge, it's actually divided up this particular edge into five sections. I can increase that amount, let's say 10, and you can see now we have 10 sections. So that's good for being able to precisely position your cut. I'm just going to bring that back to five. If I uncheck that and hold down the shift key, it gives me the same thing. So using the shift key is obviously much faster. Now use loop range is useful when you don't want to cut too far. I'll show you what I mean. So if I hold down shift here and cut, that cuts across the entire loop. If I say use loop range and come here, you can see it only cuts the polygon either side of the edge that I'm cutting. If I change that to two, now it does two each side. So that's actually a pretty handy way to control cuts. I tend to cut in entire loops and then dissolve the edges I don't need. But really, I should remember this because it makes it much easier. Just turn that off now. Now the last thing I want to talk about is preserve curvature. This is extremely handy. If you've used the slide tool, you may have heard of preserve curvature and may have used preserve curvature. If I just go into edge mode and double click this edge and press MO just to grab the, the edge slide tool. I call it the slide tool, but it's the edge slide tool. And if I turn preserve curvature on, and then control drag out an edge, you can see it's trying to maintain the curvature of that sphere. And I can't tell you how many times this has saved me in my work. So super handy, you don't have to eyeball. If you need to add curvature, you can actually add it as you're sliding it out. But you can also do that using the loop cut tool. So once again with KL, if I just turn on preserve curvature and hold down shift just to quantize that to the center, you can see that adds the curvature, which is also super handy. And because that's still live, I can adjust the tension on the fly. 
And if you want to get really creative, you can use a profile. And you can do all kinds of crazy things just by adjusting this graph. Not something I really use. I prefer to have a little more control over my cuts, which I tend to add one at a time. But preserve curvature is really important and something you really should know. Okay, so that's the loop and path cut tools. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at plane cut.